everybody, this is Praxis, and today I've been working on the shed. I got the last of the roof trusses on, and I'll show you that in a later video, but today I wanted to do a video in this area about information. Uh, this black pipe here is going to be the outside water line. It starts back in the utility room, goes under here. If you guys might have seen some of the earlier videos, I excavated this later and, and redid the uh, coupling on it because I wasn't pleased with it. It passes through this wall here, does a little zigzag, and the intent was that it was going to follow, see that uh, bluish uh, pipeline over there? The intent was it was going to follow that. That is the daylight drain, that it's the perimeter drain that drains all the extra uh, moisture from around the foundation here. Uh, and that has a nice gravity drop all the way over there. I'd ask the people who are doing the site work to take this pipe and put it right on top of that pipe. And they did accept that they uh, neglected the word right on top. Uh, as in immediately on top of. They had it sort of roughly following the path, but it was several feet above. It kind of started low, it went high, it went back low again. And that was a real problem because the idea of this water line is that I want it to be able to have an outlet over on the other end that I can open in the winter time and just have the entire pipe gravity drain out. Uh, the reason you would want that to uh, be the case is so that you don't have water pooling and then it freezes and expands and cracks your pipe. Uh, you could uh, use a compressor and blow the water out of it, but how much easier is it to just have, you know, a little spigot on the end, you open it up, it empties, and, you know, you're done. You don't have to worry about whether you have a compressor available, whether the compressor is working, or all these kind of things. Just a lot simpler if you just have it uh, follow the uh, path of the... Uh, of the uh, perimeter drain, which they didn't. Uh, so I have the people here today re-excavating this, undoing the work that was done earlier by the same company, uh, different people, same company, uh, and I'm going to have them do it uh, properly this time. The reason I want to do this video uh, about this, other than just kind of complaining, you know, people don't always do what you tell them to do, is that uh, I was able to find out exactly the route of the, all of these things because of earlier videos that I'd done, like this one. I was actually earlier uh, today looking through the older videos. I think it was around like day 120 or 200. I don't remember exactly when it was. But uh, I had a shot that showed exactly where this perimeter drain ran because the people who did the work they couldn't really remember they thought maybe it had gone that way or come around here and shot over there they couldn't really remember exactly where it was i thought that this was the path of it and i was able to confirm it on the video and that saves a lot of time money uh by me being able to tell them exactly where that thing ran from there to precisely the middle point between this little step over here i also knew exactly where this uh you know, a black pipe uh, ran. So, you know, whether or not you're going to be doing your own uh, 360 video series about your build someday or not, is a good idea to take lots of photographs because you may need to go back and refer to those photographs later. Whenever you're going to close up a wall and there's wires running through that wall, take a quick photograph. It can just be a really handy uh, memory jog later on if you want to tell whether a wire went from th this point to this point like this or whether it went like this or whether it went a little and then up and then over. A photograph is worth a lot of information later on. So take photographs when you're doing this kind of stuff. Take lots of photographs. You never know what kind of information you may need later. That's it. Thanks for watching.